In this last video, we'll recap the difference between being a startup and being an incumbent in the marketplace and how that you can use that to better evaluate the opportunity that you are considering as you begin building your, your business or business plan. That is, you have an idea, you're thinking about going forward, how do you think about whether or not to do this? Just from, a, just from the opportunity perspective, how does one evaluate it going forward in the context of the industries that you're looking at? In sum, we talked about this two, two videos ago, certain things favor existing firms. They're on the learning curve, they know what they're doing, they do it every day. They have a reputation that you have to build from scratch. They have a positive cash flow that allows them to be more responsive to changes and be able to do pricing actions more quickly, hire new people, all sorts of things. They have economies of scale so they can operate on a marginal cost perspective. And oftentimes they have a tremendous amount of complementary assets. Uh, people doing maybe professional service, people doing sales, selling other products and services, things that can support them support the product you have to build all those from scratch they already have those the good news is we also have some advantages of a startup this is mostly the case when something out there has destroyed the advantage that these assets have amazon is a classic example of this facebook was another google was another there are many cases where some new change in the industry electric cars for example that lowers the levels the playing field and allows us to compete more evenly the best way to do this for a startup is with a discrete product some specific product that you have control of end to end that you can sell directly to the customer and from that sale to the customer you get immediate feedback about how to prove, improve your products features and functions this is generally best implemented when the, what's necessary to achieve the objective is some kind of human capital. Creativity, it could be, for example, fashion, it could be, for example, music, it could be software engineering, um, it could be ideas of some kind, something that you get a bunch of people together to, to form a group of people or a group of, of creative, a creative uh, project that goes and does something that is discrete and can be sold end to end. Some new product, a video game is a good example of that. Um, software product, apps for phones, uh, some new application on social media, that sort of thing. Human capital, why? Because you could recruit that among your friends. So here are the key ideas. Large companies tend to be stuck in their old way of thinking. In existing, in, 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 in addition to this, they have to protect their current customers. Their, they don't want their current customers shifting over to this new way of doing things. They want to continue to support them. And in fact, the customers don't know. They don't want to change either. either. So they actually sometimes continue to require the company to sell the way they always did. Borders, customers wanted them to keep the coffee shop you know even as they were ordering online they still wanted to be able to go there and sit down and have a cup of coffee look over the books and then order them from amazon the customers are getting all this feedback to keep doing things the same way this same old routine continues to make people want to want to, to do what they've always done and it makes it difficult for them to change so even though they have all these advantages it's also difficult for them to change for a small startup company, however, it's easy to be different. Small group of people, you just say, let's try, let's try to be different tomorrow. Let's try to make a different kind of product or service. You don't have to worry about protecting your business because you don't have one. You don't have to worry about making sure your old customers are happy because you don't have any old customers. You can easily do things differently. You can easily decide to only operate off of your website or to open up another store in town. You're operating a web business and you decide you're going to open up a retail outlet. You can do that overnight, whereas big companies just can't do that. And your customers, you're always bringing in new ones. You're trying to satisfy those new customers, but the ones that are used to, your, to an old way of doing things, you know, what you did five years ago, they don't exist because you weren't there five years ago. 
Nobody is giving you all of this feedback about why you shouldn't change and why you shouldn't worry. So not even though big players, existing companies have tremendous advantages and they're real, as we talked about, startups likewise do when they can find the right opportunity that's involved in disruptive, disruptive change that is they're able to create by their flexibility and differences new ways of doing things. They create new routines, usually using human capital. Key idea, key thing to remember, how does my business idea make use of or complement or take advantage of the Schumpeter idea of creative destruction? If you can identify how your idea for a business is related to this creative destruction that goes on periodically in the economy, and why what you're doing is going to create a new way of doing things in some manner or form, but something people have always done. It's just a new way of doing it. You can show that creative destruction. That's the key to saying this opportunity might have legs and it's worth diving into and it's worth going after. Creative destruction creates opportunities for people like us, the small guys that have a, have a desire to change the way we live, to change the way we live for the better, and by the way, to make a lot of money doing it. That's how you evaluate your opportunities.